for uh, my particular patients. Uh, I've seen often uh, umbilical hernias, uh, ear, nose, and throat involvement, meaning uh, uh, frequent otitis media, um, ear infections. Uh, we've also seen uh, increase in secretions as an early symptom. And those are probably the main symptoms that I would concentrate on. I think the, the most important thing is that um, uh, Hunter disease is a progressive uh, condition and uh, we know that uh, as we, we move forward uh, in age that we have an accumulation of the glycosaminoglycans. So if we can um, curb the accumulation of glycosaminoglycans from an early age, we can hopefully uh, prevent some of the longer term uh, features of the disorder and we can uh, lessen the burden of the disease. But I think uh, if we look at uh, cardiac or uh, internal organ involvement as well, by decreasing load from an earlier uh, time, we can, we can decrease the impact uh, for those individuals. One of the hard parts about uh, Hunter uh, syndrome is that we we have a neurological involvement in these patients with uh, neurodegeneration and uh, certainly it's difficult to know who is going to uh, get neurological involvement and who is not. And I think uh, if we had uh, better markers for this, uh, it would make our um, life all a bit easier because it's, we don't have a crystal ball and certainly we can look for early signs of neurological involvement. But if we had a better way of determining uh, genotype-phenotype relationships, I think that would be very helpful uh, to, to see what's going on with these patients.